hello everyone and uh, welcome back to the course of computer vision in the previous uh, video we discussed about how we have we are going to organize the lectures as well as the exercises and we also got introduced to the team i will be the main point of contact as well as the main lecturer uh, who will take majority of the lectures uh, vincent and mark will uh, coordinate with me and help me out when i need uh, their help and uh, Prathmesh and Darius will take care of the exercises. Um, in this video, we are going to talk about we, we are going to start talking about um, computer vision in general. So I'm going to do an introduction of computer vision and its related applications to you. So let's begin. Um, in the introduction to computer vision, um, I'm going to start talking about uh, mainly the application area, commercial and research based, where computer vision is heavily used and you will be surprised. So let's see what it's, uh, what it's about. Um, these slides are not mine, uh, I have adopted them from uh, uh, James Tompkins uh, lecture series on computer vision from Brown University from the year 2017. So if you want to go back and uh, check out their slides, you are welcome to do this. Uh, Jitendra Malik is one of the pioneer, is considered one of the pioneer of uh, computer vision. And according to him, he tried to coin uh, three R's of computer vision, recognition, reconstruction, as well as reorgan re re reorganization. Um, Instead of writing, say, let's say, reading, writing, and arithmetic, and so on, so, so these things, because uh, when you think about computer vision and its uh, real world application, majority of them uh, encompass, are encompassed by these ideas. Um, so that's why I guess uh, he uh, said that statement. We will come back to this statement at the end of the lecture so that we reflect on whether these statements make sense. Um, we already know that there are multitudes of applications for computer vision from, uh, for example, like in laptops, when you have biometrics, auto login, face recognition based on 3D, optical character recognition, such things. Uh, even smartphones these days have so many applications that use computer vision directly or indirectly, like um, your Snapchat filters or Facebook uh, messengers uh, tagging and the virtual avatars that you create on them. And then there are also spe specialized uh, applications on Android and uh, iOS equally that uh, explore uh, or that use computer vision uh, algorithms heavily. For example, panorama construction, um, uh, image stitching by, uh, it is panorama construction is done by image stitching and the, the software itself has inbuilt this uh, algorithm so that you are when you are taking the panorama it automatically stitch, uh, stitches the uh, images to produce a final panoramic image um, even on web you find a lot of applications for example uh, in google photos when you upload your photos there there is uh, object detection recognition uh, pipelines running behind geolocalization or even facebook uh, uh, Facebook has uh, uh, a lot in in, it, in in its interface a lot of uh, vision algorithms running uh, at the back end. Um, what else? Yeah, in, in the VR, uh, virtual reality and augmented reality have also been influenced heavily by, uh, um, for example, when you see HTC Vive or even um, Hololens or Micro Microsoft also has. Uh, its own uh, virtual uh, augment, uh, virtual reality uh, lenses. Uh, Google also has them. Facebook has released recently uh, named Oculus. It is uh, it's a big name in gaming industry, and gaming industry seems to be quite fast in adopting VR and uh, AR um, very quickly because it has a huge applications. Because uh, imagine playing in a virtual reality game by uh, immersing yourself by wearing those lenses. It, it's a completely different uh, experience. Um, we also see that in medical image, imaging has also taken a lot of uh, use, uh, are using a lot of uh, vision algorithms. Uh, for example, in CT ring construction, uh, MRI, X-rays, even assisted, assisted, assisted diagnosis, even interoperative or postoperative surgeries are taking um, taking uh, use of computer vision algorithms um, 
and therefore medical imaging uh, field has also has been revolutionized because of uh, the state of the art uh, vision techniques even in industry for example as simple thing as um, number plate recognition has uh, seen quite a jump now instead of uh, using instead of using traditional feature based engineering approach um, the latest state of the art computer vision networks like neural networks are uh, giving a very uh, human level performance so that's why industry is quick to adopt vision algorithms um even in gaming stations uh, like xbox kinect uh, nintendo why they all come built in with lot of different sensors which take in your uh, gestures or even depths of the person who's playing the game and uh, uh, use that as a control mechanism for uh, manipulating the different characters or uh, different modes of the game and this has become a very usual thing right now very common thing right now um transportation industry has also seen a huge um, improvement in terms of uh, uh, driverless cars automate uh, assist, uh, assistive parking and assisted driving also assistive driving has become so ubiquitous these days it's everywhere um how about uh, completely driverless uh, cars future uh, can you imagine that kind of future where uh, Uh, when you go on the road there is no other no drivers uh, driving the cars it's just uh, uh, driverless cars um, imagine the implications of that uh, another example where um, vision is used is uh, visual for visual effects uh, for example in media uh, movies and tv uh, tv shows even in sports for example um let's look at specific examples for example in this case optical character recognition uh, this technology uh, uses uh, neural networks right now and it generates um, uh, predictions of what digit it is able to recognize from an image of a num number plate uh, for example on the right when you see um, the original the, the top is the original number plate uh, it is filtered and background is cleared and then each character is uh, individually boxed and then uh, recognized and and this 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 is this technology has been there since a long time few years now and um vision is behind this technology uh next application is face detection uh face detection is also so ubiquitous these days that it's there everywhere um whether it's your facebook feed whether it's your google photos on your mobile phone or whether it's your i photos on your uh, iphone even latest cameras um have inbuilt face uh, face detection algorithms running behind them um even snapchat filters for example have face uh, detectors because it's it's heavily uh, the snapchat filters are heavily dependent on uh, face detection algorithms because once the face is detected only then can they apply those filters so um face detection algorithms have uh, are there everywhere these days what next yeah this is very popular application of uh, face detection algorithm um where it detects where the face is located and it swaps between two person it's a it was a popular uh, snapchat uh, filter here you can see that um, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie have their faces swapped and it it works quite well in this case you can see that it is easy to uh, recognize that they, their faces are swapped because we know who they are but otherwise it's uh, it's quite a good uh, Uh, face swapping uh, filter um but there are certain cases where you can, you will see that these techniques fail for example in this case it um the baby's face has been transferred to the adults and adults to the baby and on the right you see that um a face not a real person's face but a, a caricature has been transferred from the box uh, from the coffee coffee uh, glass to the face and the face into the coffee glass and it it does not look so good it does not blend well so what happened here what it uh, why did it fail um so this algorithm or this filter that um, was using this face swap did not consider the nearby or the age nearby attributes of the person from whom you are swapping the faces or even the related features near the face were uh, ignored and that is why um this kind of um, un un uh, unevenness or un uh, unrealistic face swaps have uh, uh, has have occurred 
Uh, smile detection is also very popular. It's very easy to see and detect. Like for example, in this case, uh, and it's, it's inbuilt in a digital camera. So when you're taking a photograph, uh, the camera is able to detect whether people are smiling or not. Instead of uh, you asking the people to smile, the camera itself takes care of that. Uh, and you can see here quite well that um, in different instances where the boy is laughing, uh, the algorithm is able to detect whether he's smiling or not. Uh, another application, quite interesting one, and it's a recent one that was launched by uh, Amazon Go. Um, it is about object rec uh, recognition in supermarket. So if you have an um, Amazon account, you enter this specialized uh, store by, uh, opened by Amazon. You buy stuff there and uh, those stuff are, uh, whatever you buy are tagged or billed directly to your Amazon account. And you don't have to uh, stand in the check-in line, you just go in buy whatever you want to buy uh, keep it in your bag and then leave and as it is as simple as that and this is like a dream of any shopper um, for example here you see that um, uh, but there are there are certain problems with this there, there are big challenges uh, to be tackled with this for example when you see here uh, there are multiple customers here how would the if, if there are cameras fitted if you, you can see that there are um, cameras fitted at the top of the uh, shelves which tracks um, if there is any object taken from the shelf but it's difficult to know which customer took that um, particular object or who bought the um, particular um, item from the shelf so there there are issues with uh, this object recognition technique and it has to work every time uh, another example of failure case kind of you can see is here this object is very blurred, so even a camera which is located in the from the side or the profile, if it is not able to recognize uh, which object was uh, because of the blur or motion, and, and this blur has occurred because of the motion, uh, then it, it's it's a tough challenge, right? So there are, there are challenges even in um, implementing such uh, algorithms on uh, commercial uh, super, uh, supermarkets. Biometrics. Biometrics is a very interesting application of uh, computer vision. Biometrics have been have been used for um, security purposes. Uh, it is a unique signature of uh, a give, uh, of a person, and this is a very good example of that. So there was a, a photographer, and he had um, taken a photo of a little Afghan girl uh, who was 12 years old at that time. Um, this Afghan girl is shown on the left. And um, later, after 30 years, he um, when the uh, not after 30, after 18 years, he went back to the same place, um, uh, and he could not find her. So he started looking for her, but he could not um, recognize uh, the woman anymore because she had all uh, because she was already 30. Uh, in any case, what he did was uh, so there is a nice story explained uh, about uh, this whole. Uh, phenomena in on, on the Wikipedia page you can take a look uh, so he started taking photograph of similar looking people a lot and uh, eventually by matching the iris patterns of uh, the new images uh, with the previous image he was able to localize where this uh, uh, girl is currently and this is this was a very interesting application for our, uh, you know from bio, for biometrics perspective and uh, it used computer vision um, another application is like login without passwords, which has become also very common across devices and um, uh, interfaces. For example, when you're using your laptop, uh, it sometimes uses your fingerprint sensors for uh, logins or even uses your uh, faces. Um, even your phones use your face for uh, unlocking the screen and your uh, phone itself. Well, but there are issues with this, okay? Um, there are issues with face IDs. Like you, you can spoof a, an attack on uh, this recognition system by instead of having a, a real face, if you even if you show a photograph of uh, the person, the device sometimes unlocks, and this is a big security flaw because anybody who has a photo of you can just uh, use your device and unlock your uh, system, which is unacceptable, right? Um, however, we can counter. Uh, counter spoof uh, these things by by using 3D information instead of just 2D image. So how does this work? Um, you fit a 3D sensor which creates a um, 3D mesh of your face 
and it over and it it learns over time or and uh, it it stores that um, point cloud or this mesh 3d mesh information and uh, whenever you go back again and you try to unlock it will use this 3d um, mesh to unlock uh, to compare your signature and then unlock the system for you um, a, a very good application is again in Apple's Face ID. So in the latest iPhones and the new, the newer ones, iPhones at, uh, have this uh, uh, 3D depth camera, which generates 30,000 invisible uh, points in, in your face, and it stores them along with an infrared image of your face. And Apple's Face ID uses both of these um, techniques in a combined manner to create a 3D mesh of your face. And then um, it recognizes your face using this and unlocks your phone for you. Um, this technique is very good because it's also robust to facial hairs and different attributes like uh, if you have uh, a makeup or if you are wearing sunglasses or even eye lens, contact lenses. Um, if you have um, some jewelry on your face, uh, scarves even and it's uh, uh, invariant to wearing gla glasses also. So this is a very good um, uh, improvement over uh, 2D face uh, recognition or 2D face ID uh, uh, systems. Um, one more thing I want to tell is that e even in e even in this uh, case, it is not easy to adopt to different attributes change. So, for example, if it recognizes to, uh, to up to a certain uh, level that uh, it's the same person, then what it will do is ask you to update that profile for you, the Apple's Face ID uh, software, and it will generate uh, and it will update the blueprint and then it will start recognizing you again. So there is the security feature also inbuilt in this Face ID, which is also good. Uh, you should take a look at this if you are interested. And so this brings us um, to the main applications of 3D. Um, is about reconstruction. Um, you generate 3D images or 3D surfaces from a lot of images. And this process or this technique is called reconstruction in computer vision. And it has a lot of, a lot of applications. For example, specifically in digital humanities, because we have a lot of old photographs of um, old buildings and um, from different angles and different profiles. Um, and we want to stitch them together to create a 3D um, visual of the um, cultural heritage we had. Uh, Japan is uh, quite ahead in this application, mainly because in Japan, uh, because of the uh, volcanic belt, uh, most of the buildings have uh, have lost are, are lost because they were uh, they um, they were demolished due to the earthquakes and tectonic movements. And because of this um, history, geographic history, Japan tends to build uh, cultural heritages on uh, wooden platforms. So it's not easy for them to maintain those cultural heritage over time. So uh, however, Japan has a lot of images and so it could uh, recreate those cultural heritage uh, using this image. So, uh, so if you are interested in digital um, uh, humanities with uh, 3D applications. Uh, you should look at a lot of work done by Japanese researchers. They have done uh, really good work uh, with 3D reconstruction. Uh, this specific um, uh, work was uh, uh, created quite an um, quite an interest or uh, quite uh, became quite popular. So what the people uh, what the authors did here um, they called uh, the paper "Building Rome in a Day." Basically, they con uh, created a lot of, uh, they, they collected a lot of images from various sources and uh, they geotagged them uh, based on where the photo was taken. Uh, this project was done by Microsoft, by the way. Um, and they used surf technique. Surf is, um, is a technique which, which, which is called speed up um, robust features. Uh, it is scale and uh, rotation invariant. So if you have different sizes of the same location, it is fine. This this uh, feature extraction works. It's invariant to that. Uh, also, it is invariant if you have a bit of rotation uh, of your um, original scene, then um, this feature extraction can is invariant to that also. Uh, so the authors, uh, the researchers collected a lot of images from across uh, web and uh, did some image stitching using the surf uh, feature engineering and then created um, a picture of Rome by using just um, 
just images and this this was the um, a very important landmark in 3d reconstruction um, in, in 3D reconstruction, um, two, two years later, they became they, they produced another research which was called building Rome in a cloudless day. So basically, they got rid of the photos which had um, which were blurry and which had uh, different lighting conditions, and this gave them speed ups. In instead of using a large cluster of uh, GPUs, they used just a small cluster and were able to create um, the image of Rome uh, with fewer images. Um, another application, very interesting one, is um, how to create uh, a motion using different frames, uh, image frames taken from different angles. So if you have not seen the movie Mat Matrix, you would not remember how uh, this image was, uh, this, this movie specific movie scene was uh, generated. Let's take a look at the, the, the clip and you will know what I mean. Observe now. You see how the camera is moving around and taking images from all the angles. Yes, so this is this is what um, this is this is a very good application of 3D uh, reconstruction. Also, in that scene, you saw that um, uh, the camera was moved around simultaneously, but it's not possible for one camera to go around and take all the angles shots, right? So what they did, um, the movie makers, they, they had set up a lot of cameras around and they created the scene and they took uh, time uh, spaced uh, frames from each camera and that created this, mo uh, this uh, circular motion around the uh, main character. And this is the power of 3D reconstruction, which we are going to explore in our next slide or the next part. Thank you very much.